Diane Mahanam, Vice Chairman. Uh, this is the first meeting our chairman has missed, Dan Dunn, um, since he took over. So if I'm a little bumpy, slow doing this, bear with me. This is the meeting of Monday, November 4th, 2013, of the Arlington Board of Selectmen. This meeting is being recorded by ACMI for our cable channels as well as streaming live at acmitv.com. Our first agenda item is a proclamation, Arlington Recycles Week 2013. Mr. Jameson, Gordon. Thank you, Diane. Um, um, I'm Gordon Jamison. I'm one of the co-chairs of Arlington Recycling Committee. And uh, each year at this time, we ask the board to proclaim a week in the middle of November as Arlington Recycles Weeks. I've lost track how many years we've been doing this, but it must be eight or nine. Um, the, the week coincides with America Recycles Day, which is November 15th. And uh, during that week each year, we now have our Fall Community Collection Day. Um, there'll be lots of information uh, forthcoming, both in the e-alerts, on the town web page. I believe in the, the uh, DPW will be putting some stuff out in the Advocate, so um, that's not quite, that's, there's some information you can find on the website, I think under recycling and, and composting and things right now, but there'll be more information about that. I won't bore the board with um, those things, and people at home won't remember what I tell them to do and not to do, so the website is the better source of inter interaction. And, uh, just before we signed on, um, I requested that maybe the manager could have the proclamation put out as part of that on the website um, to um, tell people what that is, and we might get better distribution that way. Um, as always, we thank the board for their continued support in this uh, ongoing endeavor to uh, reduce the amount of waste that we pay to dispose of at the incinerator. As we re remarked last month, it's, we've made very good progress reducing um, one-third the amount of tonnage that we send to the incinerator over the course of the last 10 years. So, uh, And Adam, perhaps you could mention how this re impacts our green communities thing. There was something just put out. Yeah, I, I mean, the town's recycling efforts and the recycling committee's efforts were certainly one of the leading reasons that the Commonwealth honored the town with the Leading by Example Award that I informed mm. the board about last week. Is that what you were referring yes, to? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I mean, that uh, recycling is a huge part of the sustainability efforts of the town and all the work of Gordon and the committee and Mr. Rademacher and his team at DPW have really yes, I, paid off in that regard. I've been remiss to forget the, the hardworking people at the um, DPW who over the years, first uh, Ruth Yanetti uh, was a big uh, import and now Charlotte Milan is the uh, uh, full-time, part-time uh, recycling coordinator and she, she really makes our life simpler so we can focus on good ways to uh, uh, approach the, the uh, Mike and the other people at DPW on ways to uh, further reduce our, our tonnage significantly so we can first hit our 50% diversion uh, target in the next couple of years, hopefully. Uh, any questions? Uh, no, we'll just have the manager um, put the proclamation online. And I believe you may have said this, but Recycling Week is November 10th through November 16th? No, I didn't, but it is, is November, it? the Recyc Arlington Recycles Week this year is November 10th through 16th, and the Community Collection Day is on that Saturday the 16th. Nine to one, don't come early, don't come late. <laughs> no early birds. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Thank Mr. Thank you much. James. Take care. Okay. Agenda item t number two. For approval, our consent agenda, minutes of the meeting of October 7th and October 28th, 2013, as well as, that's it. I'm going to say as well as. It's usually longer. Um, is there a move approval? Second. By Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Agenda item three, we have a request for Monotomy Grill and Tavern late night event, 11-29-2013. We have Mr. Lyons, the owner and operational manager here. Hey, Bill. How's it going? Good. How's it going? <laughs> not too bad. How you doing? Do you want to give, uh, we have some information here. Do you want to give a little bit of information at the microphone about your sure. event and what um, you're requesting? 
committee members of the class of 1983 approached me before the restaurant was even built uh, and wanted to do their high school reunion. So I, um, you know, we had a lot of dialogue as the place was being built and um, we sort of came up with a game plan and um, I agreed to close the restaurant um, for the night. And um, recently they approached me um, and asked if I could go before you guys for that one extra hour for the event. Um, I have two, there's two committee members here from class of 83 and um, um, I, all I know is I'm looking forward to the event. I will have food served throughout the night. Uh, I have door security. Um, fully staffed. Um, I think it should be a great event and I'm looking forward to it. I move approval subject to all conditions set for. Approved by Mr. Carroll? I'll, I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Uh, no, I, I do just want to say uh, that I think when the tavern was built that this was, you know, going to be a main proponent of it and Billy's mentioned that before in front of us and um, I'm happy to see this, you know, taking place and I'm looking forward to more of these in the future. Yeah, I'm, it's sort of a test for me, but I'm looking forward to it too with the parking and um, a lot of the people coming to the reunion are actually staying at the hotel. So it's, it's sort of benefiting uh, uh, the whole town to a degree. So, right. Thanks, Billy. Mr. Greerly? Yeah, um, uh, William, what's your capacity down there? Well, we seat 150. Okay. So the capacity is like 225. Um, in the letter, we're expecting probably 150. Yeah. We're hoping. Yeah. Um, so we won't even be close to capacity. The um, only thing we normally ask in a case like this is if you would agree to, like, call for a last call at 1230 or quarter of at the sure. latest. You yes, know, just so that uh, absolutely. absolutely a stop by 1 o'clock. Yep. Just, just for the alcohol. If people yep. want to keep eating up until one o'clock, it's just yeah, we'll we just did it last last meeting with Punjab for New Year's Eve. Okay, great. Okay. Um, Mr. Manager, is there anything in terms of there's no, no police detail or anything like that? He has his own private security. <clears throat> that's what I heard. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I don't believe there's anything required. Okay. Motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous fan. Have fun, Dorothy. <laughs> Can I be an honorary class of 83? No. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good luck on your first test run. Agenda item four, request food vendor license. Aurora Lenang doing business as Walgreens, store 1864 and 3112 at 324 Mass Ave and 1425 Mass Ave. Hi, Good if you name. could just say your name and. Hi, I'm Patrice Palmese. I'm the registered store manager at uh, 1425 Mass Ave with Walgreens. Hi, I'm Mike Caro. I'm the manager at 324 Mass Ave Walgreens. Okay, and just want to say briefly what you're. Sure, we have and, all your uh, info. we're just representing our company. We're opening up a brand new uh, department uh, within a store. It's called Fresh. And what Fresh offers is all um, basically fresh foods, uh, vegetables, sandwiches, um, fruits, um, desserts. It, it's catered more or less to the, uh, the public for uh, better eating. We've uh, uh, promoted this in our Walgreens in uh, Chicago and some of our inner, inner city stores. And it has proven to be quite a success. Um, in regards to um, just people coming in and just picking up quick bites um, and also uh, some meals too. Uh, we won't be offering meals if I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. It's just more or less like sandwiches, fruits, vegetables. Um, and we go through a proper training, uh, food safety. Um, we also go through OSHA training. Um, we have it. Uh, there's certain departments. Uh, Mike's department is going to be more of an island, where mine is going to be more of. Um, it's going to be basically in the in the wall, more or less, the refrigeration. Um, all the all the products are made outside of the store. Nothing will be made in the location, um, and it's delivered six days a week. Um, and all the stales go also go back. Okay, uh, Mr. Greeley. I move <coughs> approval for both locations, subject to our uh, conditions as set forth. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kiro, any discussion? I have a question. Yeah, are you going to have any seating 
for no, we are not. no seating. No seating. Thanks. Uh, just one quick question in terms of the meals, packaged meals, sandwiches, et cetera, to go. People going to take them to go? No microwave heating up? No, no, no. microwave heating I, up. I'm just asking for yep. curiosity's yep. sake. Yep. I'm not yep. saying you should or should not. Yep. Okay. Um, any further discussion? A motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Hero. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much. Have a Thank good night. Agenda item five, citizens open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. <coughs> Anyone here would like to speak under citizens open forum? Seeing none, we'll move on, that is closed. Agenda item six, for approval, modification to board of survey, Irving Street. Um, the Applicant is represented by attorney Anessi. Um, I think I'll let you start the process. Yes. Uh, Robert Anessi for the applicant, uh, Mr. actually Mr. and Mrs. Pickett. Uh, we're here for, uh, to amend an old board of survey going back to 1924. Now we're here because we were told to be here by Juliana Rice, okay? Juliana was the town council uh, three months ago. I had a chat with her, and I asked her, where should we go? Should, should we go to the ARB? Should we go to the Board of Selectmen? She said, adamantly, Bob, the Board of Selectmen, <coughs> sitting as a Board of Survey. Now, uh, uh, further, uh, to further buttress that, if you look at the new rules, okay, for the Board of Survey, they talk about a, a subdivision of a tract of two or more lots, okay? We're talking one lot here. We're not talking two or more lots. In addition, the plan laying out lot 104 was laid out probably 75 to 80 years ago, long before the new Board of Survey regulations came into existence in 2010. Now, everybody who purchased on Irving Street, okay, and in that neighborhood, knew about the Board of Survey because they would have had a title examination done when they purchased. They had an option at that point to buy or not buy. They chose to buy, okay? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pickett own a home in the same area. What they would like to do is they would like to build a single family house on that lot and sell their existing home on Windermere to their son. Now, the, what we're proposing to do is we're not, we don't want to build the road all the way out. If you build the road all the way out, you come to the easterly side of Irving Street, and there's a 16 to 18 foot drop, okay, which really <coughs> does not make it feasible to do that. So we're not proposing to do that. What we are proposing to do is build it out approximately 150 feet to come to the middle of lot 104. Now, Dave Lenata is going to talk with you in a few minutes about the engineering aspects. Dave has met extensively with Wayne Chouinard, the town engineer, uh, Wayne gave uh, Dave a two-page list that he had to comply with in terms of drainage issues and the like. Uh, Dave did do that. Dave got the plan back to Wayne Chenard, and Wayne Chenard said, I'm okay with it. Pass it on to the board. Let's get this thing going. And that's exactly what we did. Now, you've got that plan. Uh, with respect to, uh, the uh, again, the individuals who uh, uh, about the property and who have complained uh, and may complain uh, about uh, the build out of the street. Uh, again, they knew when they bought that this was going to happen at some point down the line. What we're trying to do is we're trying to do it in as reasonable a fashion as we can. We are to some extent changing the slope, okay? Uh, the width of the road, by the way, is going to be approximately 16 feet. If you check out private ways in the town of Arlington, you're going to find many private ways with a width of 16 feet, 17 feet, 20 feet. Indeed, uh, I cited one that Mr. Tomeyan did on a, a road in a, a town, uh, actually three houses, and that one was, not a, was initially not a, an old board of survey, but he came before the board, this particular board, uh, back a couple of years back, and he got a Board of Survey app uh, approved for a 20-foot wide road. Now, the issues before you are not that we're building a house. That's not the job of the Board of Survey. The issues are whether, in fact, we comply with the regulations 
with respect to building a road. And Wayne is going to talk about that. Uh, uh, Dave, I'm sorry, is going to talk about that. Now, some of the issues relate to <coughs> fire safety. Can we get a fire truck down the road? We can. Can we get a fire truck down and have that fire truck back out? We can. And that's been done in the past in this town. I believe it's been done at 50 Washington Street, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we can do that. So fire safety is not an issue. And by the way, we showed this plan to the police department, to the fire department, to the Board of Health, and the Department of Public Works, okay? We got no objections from any of those individuals. Uh, I spoke with, uh, with the uh, Department of Public Works myself, okay? And we made sure that uh, uh, he acknowledged that he, had, that he had seen that plan. So again, with respect to the with issue, we don't think that's a problem. With respect to fire safety, there's a hydrant within 188 feet of the house we propose to build. There are two other hydrants within 500 feet uh, of, again, where we intend to build a house on Lot 104. We're not going to do any blasting, okay? Uh, if, if we do blasting, it's going to be minimal, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to chip. We're going to chip away at that, uh, at that ledge, okay, in that area. And there is ledge there. There's no question about that. Uh, we're going to chip away at that so that uh, we're not going to be disturbing budding homeowners with respect to blasting. Uh, uh, with that, I think I'd like Dave to at least show you, the, you the, uh, the plan at this point, show you how the drainage works, okay? But again, I emphasize to the board, we're not here to get your permission to build a house. That's not what this is all about. This is simply about a board of survey, to extend a road that was laid out uh, essentially way back in 1923, okay? And you've got uh, an acknowledgement, and you've seen this in my package to you from Wayne Shinar, the town engineer, that in fact he's okay with the plan as modified. He's the town engineer, he's not my engineer, he's your engineer. Uh, Dave? And I just want to say to Attorney Inessi, I just want to let you know that this board is very mindful in terms of what is job responsibilities and duties are and are not so when we take that very seriously so I just want to lay you any concerns on that I'm gonna set up um, mr. I have a quick question maybe the manager can answer I know you said no blasting but perhaps a little bit of blasting if in that case if there is any blasting that has to be coordinated with the fire department and no is there a threshold it would need to be Okay, so on, you said there wouldn't be any, but there might be on the off chance, but I'm sure you're well aware that if you are um, to contact the fire Absolutely. chief, I'm not. I'm just, as you say things, I'm writing things, so now I can take it off in my head. Okay. I think if you stand where Mr. Anessa is, because you have to be at the microphone. Yeah, sure and if you could just identify yourself again for the record, sir. Dave, identify yourself for the record. I will. My name is Dave Lenata. I am uh, owner of Lenata and Associates. We prepared the plans that are associated with this project. Now, what we plan on doing, this is the border survey plan, which is in accordance with the instructions of the town engineer was to revise the profile. So it goes in the downward away from um, down uh, grade away from where we know instead of having an upgrade grade. So the grade going from our end, the blue line, down towards Churchill F. And the yellow line was the previous approved 1923 border. So is it fair to say there's a change in the slope date? Yes, it's a, change, it's a change in slope and what from is one direction to the other direction. What, uh, what's one direction to the other direction? Well, what instead of going away from Churchill Ave, what it will do is come back towards Churchill Ave, the elevation. And so will the, the drainage. I don't know if Todd could do the dance there. What, what does that do to the abutting properties, particularly the abutting property on Churchill Ave, in terms of the water, uh, the uh, drainage? Well, what, what's intended to do is the roadway is um, is tilted sideways, sheet flow, and it's going to the water will run down the curb line, the gutter line, the pavement, across in front of his driveway into a catch basin, 
which is just beyond his driveway. You can see the okay. cake basin in here. There's a cake basin here that's supposed to catch all the water from here and then put it into the drainage system down the road. Can you point to where the house is on Churchill? Approximately? Okay, and then point to the drain again? Okay, thank you. I just want to orient myself. So is the plan designed to divert the water away from that house on Churchill? Well, yes. The, over the years, prior to, prior to whoever owns the property now, it seems like the gutter line was uh, created along Churchill to divert the water down, straight down Churchill. And I believe that the original Board of Survey, it was constructed in accordance with the original Board of Survey because the existing, typically a five to six inch high curb, now is down to an inch or so. So I think what they did is they built it up to divert the water down Churchill. So that, that condition of having the water go down Irving was not acceptable to the prior owners. So in the same vein, that's what we're going to do. And we're gonna modify the curb. We're gonna raise the curb to a minimum of three inches to make sure we have a a defined gutter line. So in essence, oh, there's one other thing that we're gonna do. In front of the driveway, we're proposing to put a uh, slight burr, three inches or so, so there's another defined gutter line. So it's gonna go up a little and then down the driveway. Again, all these are an effort to minimize the runoff towards number 64 Churchill. And basically it's gonna um, take water that is currently going that way and diverted into either the catch basin or down the road or beyond this property. So it's gonna hopefully alleviate more water than, take more water out of there instead of allowing it to go down into his driveway and run down the slope. And the utilities will be uh, placed in the road <coughs> in accordance with all the Commonwealth and the town rules. Um, I think that pretty much all that will alleviate all the drainage and it will accommodate for uh, the runoff. How many meetings did you have with Wayne Chouinard over this plan, by the way? I think we've had um, probably about six or eight go-arounds back and forth. So we worked out some details, some things that he d would rather see this way instead of that way we could accommodate him. So it seems like um, he's, well, I know that he's satisfied. I, Pretty sure the DPW is satisfied, and this is the uh, this plan is the result of those meetings. Is yes, that correct. This is a um, this is a, more of a site plan than it is a board of survey plan, but it's more shows a lot more information, and it's all in accordance with what uh, Mr. Shunad wanted to see. This is basically the the base plan that we used, and from there we went to the board of survey plan, which doesn't require to be shown a lot of the information. Okay. Uh, just one second. Any questions from my colleagues, uh, Mr. Leonardo? I, I just have one and one for Attorney Nessie. Um, you said that you're going to raise the current curb height by three inches. Did I hear you correctly? The curb height, the existing curb height. What is the existing approximately? Uh, well, it varies. It okay. goes from six inches up to <coughs> one inch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure that when we do that part of the roadway, that we reset that curb, either raise it, or modify the gutter line so it's a minimum of three inches and we may actually be able to get six inch reveal out of it without going right and, and, and I'll leave that to if you should receive approval also working with the town engineer and DPW I just want to say when we the Board of Selectmen had a lot of flooding concerns up on Thesda Street up on Summer Street by the Dinapolis um, putting in those high curbs um, didn't completely 100% mitigate it, but came really, really close, made it a lot better. The only time we have splash over is when people are doing more than 30 miles an hour in, in a beating rain, but you can't really engineer for that. Um, the other thing, and I apologize if you addressed this and I missed it, um, in terms of plowing, whose responsibility? Snow plowing? private way. Mr. Right. Pickett is going to plow. Okay. And by the way, the Pickett family has probably lived in this town, Charlie, his ancestors, for maybe 100 years, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's not coming into town for the purpose of building a house, selling a house, and, and disappearing. Matter of fact, his intent is 
to build the house, move into it, it's going to be more conducive to his age at this point, and sell his home on Windermere to his son. Yes. I can't, I'd be lying if I say I didn't hear the name before. So thank you. Um, if no further, uh, Mr. Carroll? No, just, just to the chair, thank you. Just to the chair's question, when, when you're talking about the raised curb, you, you're talking about an asphalt berm along the... No, this is an existing granite curb. Straight face granite curb. But you are going to put, I think you said, a, a three-inch berm or a temporary, <coughs> some, some kind of berm near Churchill? On Irving, right On in front Irving. of the driveway, so the water doesn't go down this driveway like it currently does. Okay. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, anything before I move on? Um, is there, are there any members of the public that would like to come and um, have any remarks on this plan? Uh, if you can go right up to the microphone. Thank you, sir. Madam Chairman, members of the board, my name is Carl Tamain. I represent uh, Drew Klein, the owner and abutter at 46 Churchill Ave. Uh, 64 Churchill Ave, I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to raise a couple of procedural issues first, just for the record. Um, first, I would like to note that we filed a memorandum in opposition to this with the board, and I would like that memorandum incorporated into the minutes of the meeting. Second, I, I, I don't know, I was outside talking to my client. I'm not sure whether Mr. Attorney Nessie brought this up or not. But we raised the issue with uh, town council while she was still with us about the jurisdiction of the board in hearing this matter. Um, as the board is aware, uh, there was legislation, legislation passed in 2009 giving jurisdiction to the board of survey to the ARB. And I just questioned what authority the board of selectmen still has or has retained with regard to hearing these matters. As a practical issue, I'm not sure how the Board of Selectmen can endorse a, a Board of Survey plan as the Board of Survey when they are not the Board of Survey. So that's the one issue that I've been struggling with, and I just would like it noted for the record. So noted. Um, what's being proposed today is a radical change from the Board of Survey that was approved back in 1924. It was originally, the Board of Survey as originally approved was a, a descending street running from Churchill to the existing Irving Street. Uh, today they're proposing an ascending Irving Street which would basically have all the runoff running towards Mr. Klein's property. And that has created an issue for Mr. Klein because when he purchased the property, he did his due diligence, went to the engineering department and looked at the board of survey and discussed with the engineering department that board of survey. And they had indicated to him at the time that if the lot was to be developed, it would have to be built, uh, the road would have to be built in accordance with that board of survey, which he felt comfortable with because again, gravity being uh, what it is, any road that was constructed would take the water and shed it away from his property. Today what's being proposed is bringing all that water back towards his property, and his property is already affected from the runoff of Churchill and the other five intersecting streets that exist out there. Having said that, Mr. Klein has two major issues with what's being proposed, well actually three issues. The first is drainage and he has met with Mr. Pickett and gone over some plans. There have been some discussions about revisions. And I think on the drainage issue, as far as the road layout goes, we might be able to reach an accommodation. But our engineers need to get some more information to go over it and review it. A secondary issue from the change in grade, aside from the, the runoff, is that uh, Mr. Pickett is going to have to increase the height of his lot. Basically, he's going to have to bring in tons and yards of fill to raise that lot 10 feet. He's going to be constructing retaining walls around the perimeter. Again, when uh, my client met with Mr. Pickett, Mr. Pickett offered an alternative where they would terrace the walls, and that's something that we could look at, and again, we'd have our engineers look at. But it's the consequence of changing the contour of the neighborhood and the effects of drainage that's of concern to my client. So before any decision is made, we'd like that analyzed if that's in fact what they're going to be doing, terracing of the walls and the effect. Our engineers, again, haven't had enough information to look at it and give their opinion to Mr. Klein. The third issue is one dealing with access and public safety. Um, Mr. Nessie alluded to a, a border survey I had approved uh, on another project being 20 feet wide. That may be the case, but it was also a cul-de-sac, which allowed for access, public safety equipment, to turn around. 
uh, for plows to plow without having to back down or pull snow out. It had enough access and room for snow to be deposited. Here you're talking about a 16 foot wide way that if you have a car parked there, Mr. Klein and other occupants of his home do park on the existing Irving Street. If you look at the plan, you can see his garage is literally, you know, there's just one, enough space for one car to park in front of his garage, and then it, it's Irving Street. So parking on Irving Street is an issue. With snow banks, again, I don't see any area where that snow is gonna be deposited other than on Mr. Klein's property at Churchill Ave. And with the amount of snow that we've been having, if you have snow banks on a 16 foot wide drive uh, road, you're not gonna have access. If there's a car parked there, you're not gonna have access. So at a minimum, it's our opinion that the road should be widened. 16 feet is not adequate for both public safety. Uh, as it is, trash removal is gonna be walked down to Mr. Klein's property in front of his property because the trash trucks can't get down there. So all of that needs to be looked at. And all we're asking for at this point is that there be some public input by the different departments. Now, I've heard that the engineering has signed off on, on the drainage plans. Again, our engineers on the drainage plans that were provided to us indicated there wasn't enough information to make a conclusion one way or the other. I don't know if there was something else that was provided to the town engineers. I received an email from the town engineer because I specifically asked him, when you said that it was your opinion that the plans complied with the original uh, 1920 Board of Survey, what did you mean? And it wasn't his, he basically said, I wasn't approving the plan, I was just simply saying that it contained the same data, that it had the same information, but it wasn't, the information wasn't the same, it just had the same data. That's all he was basically signifying. He has not approved the way as designed, at least in my last discussion with him. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else here from the public? I, I don't know, Mr. Klein, if you wanted to, or if you're um, attorney. Well, I mean, I can speak around and see what my attorney said, but again, the, the three issues for me. I think, as Dave has described it, the issue with runoff from the new road, roadway, that can be engineered. I'd like to know more about the details of that. I want to make sure the berm doesn't provide an issue with the snow plow or snow blower or something like that, so that that's, um, the details are understood better there. Um, the second issue is, in regards to, by changing the profile, we change the nature of what we can there. That brings in the bill, that brings in the retaining walls. Um, I don't want to put words in my neighbor's mouth, but any of us who have seen that plan were not really excited about the wall. To his credit, I think Mr. Pickett has, has recognized that. He's proposed some concepts. They aren't engineering certainly yet, but I think if you follow through on those concepts, there'd be a lot more consensus to support what he's doing. So I'd really like to see that happen. Um, my third one is just the width of the road. If you had to review that, you probably a couple of years. I don't drive an ambulance. I don't drive a bike. I don't know what it takes to get that kind of vehicle in and out of this property. And if there's a parked car there and a 16 foot road, wide road, suddenly becomes a 10 or a 9 foot wide road, can you really get access to the property? So those are my three. Thank you. Anyone else here from the public? You can just identify yourself for the record, please. Sure. <clears throat> My name's Robert Zemer. I'm Lisa Grohlman. And we're uh, butters to the lot uh, on the Irving Street side. Um, you know, thank you, Madam Chairman, for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, we wish Charlie and Jane, our neighbors of 25 years, best wishes in their, in their project. Um, but at this point, we are concerned uh, about the project, uh, the process, and the criteria by which this change in the survey uh, is being uh, applied in this instance. And, um, you know, I, I want to echo the uh, attorney of my neighbor on, on why this is being heard here and not with the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, you know, there is, uh, in 2009, legislation was passed and it's titled um, an act establishing the Arlington Redevelopment Board as the Board of Survey. Um, and, um, you know, it states the Arlington Redevelopment Board shall constitute the Board of Survey. The responsibility of the Board of Survey shall be to protect the safety, convenience, and welfare of the inhabitants of the town in regard to the layout and construction of private ways. And so, um, you know, that was approved also by town meeting. And uh, a year later, the regulations uh, governing the design and installation of ways, uh, you know, was, was adopted. And so um, part of um, 
my question is, is, is on the process. Uh, if, if the Board of Selectmen is the Board of Survey, uh, then are, 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 they, are they abiding by the process that was adopted by the town? And, and, and you know, we're just concerned that uh, these, these were adopted by the town. And, you know, basically the, the rules that we, we have to play the game by. And, and so I'm, I'm just, I just have a question about that. And, and, and uh, to my, you know, right as of now, I don't really have a, uh, an answer as to, as to why we're here. But be that as it may, here are some of my, my concerns. Um, the um, change in the street layout raises the elevation, you know, and it changes the nature of what can be built on that lot. You know, instead of, of street sloping in one direction and having a certain elevation, it's sloping up and a different elevation, and so it changes height limits and restrictions like that. Um, and it needs, you know, requires fill, retaining walls in the back end of the property. Now keep in mind, this is a, a challenging property to develop. You know, it slopes significantly 20, 30 feet perhaps from front to back, okay? That's significant. That's, that's, you know, several stories, you know, of just the land, okay? And, um, and I would also, from the layout that you see here, it's not only just a change in slope, um, there's also a change in the, the width. Um, these, these regulations have information about curbing, side slopes, retaining walls, all of those things that I just haven't, you know, I've heard the engineer answer the drainage plan, but what about all of those regulations that, that govern, you know, private ways? Have those been considered? Have they been signed off on by the appropriate, you know, bodies? I, I don't know. Um, you know, so there are certain things that are, to me, I'm not a lawyer, you know, they seem out of compliance, you know. I read the regulations, I see that it's, you know, they don't seem to be being applied here and no variance or anything, um, you know, being granted or, or asked for. So that troubles me because there doesn't seem to be a process. Um, also, uh, what else? So, you know, we also have concerns about drainage because of the elevation change and all of that and the need for walls, you know, there is going to be an impact on our property. And, you know, um, I understand that Charlie proposed some new um, uh, uh, tiering of, of edges and all of that, so there won't be such high walls and all of that, and, and, you know, that's good to hear, but we're not here about, you know, approving a house or, or anything. So that's why I'm talking about more about the street. And so, I mean, all of that stuff, you know, he's willing to work with us to mitigate any, any issues is, is good. But I, I just still have, have, you know, some questions about, uh, about it, the process. And, you know, so we would like the town to, you know, be able to confirm for us that, you know, the road and the house are gonna be, abide by, you know, the zoning, uh, the height and setback requirements and all of that stuff. And, um, well, I can say on that point when we get to it, and, and Mr. Grilly has his hand raised, it may be to this. No, on, no, on the issue of the road, um, and, and the previous speaker also brought that particular aspect up, not in terms of the house or plowing, that was just adjunct conversation. We do have the town manager and DPW director, so what I wanted to do, and I'm not stopping you, but I wanted to get all the public testimony so that the town manager and DPW director can hear the town questions as it relates to the road, the slope, the grade, and the width, mm -hmm. and then when everyone finishes, um, we'll get an answer to that. Yeah, so, right, because the process is outlined where, you know, they, these departments may have been shown things, but that they realize that they, did we, you know, did they provide written approval? Did they have, you know, the proper site plans and all of that to be able to sign off on them that, you know, this is okay? And okay. I don't know that. And, and just in terms of, I mean, we're not, I'm not trying to be bureaucratic about this. We live in a neighborhood where there have been 
literally three fires on and we've Bartlett watched in the houses time. burn down. So we do want to make sure mm -hmm. that safety and some of these other concerns are really, really addressed. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we live at the other end of Irving Street, you know, the dead end, the very end. So we've had our share of issues with snow plowing and all of that. And we understand, you know, a wide road, the wider the road, the better mm -hmm. the snow plow, you know, piles up. You get the delivery trucks, the oil truck that comes up. They need room if there's a car park there, okay. you know. So, I mean, those are, you know, legitimate concerns, I think. All right. No, definitely valid points, and I understand um, your position. Thank you. And like I said, we're going to take anybody else from the public who wants to speak, unless any point of my colleagues right now. Okay. If you could come up to the microphone. If you want to line up or... <coughs> If there's more than one person, if they want to start lining up, if th that'll make the meeting move more quickly, swiftly. Thank you. I'll be very brief. Just Thank identify you. yourself. For the my name sorry. is uh, Nick Delden. I live at uh, 9 Windermere Park with uh, my wife and my uh, two-year-old daughter. So just so you guys understand, when you look at the schematic here, I would be, uh, Charlie is proposing to build on a 30-foot hill. I would be at the bottom of that hill. So when we speak about runoff and rain, that would uh, be coming into about half of my lot. So um, really, I'm, I, I'm not really here today, I don't think, to speak on the technicalities of this plan. I have never seen this plan. In fact, the first I've heard of this matter was a letter that I got on the mail on Friday. So I've not had time to educate myself, nor do I have the material to educate myself. Um, what I would say is I think everybody that spoke tonight is a reasonable person. Uh, I haven't heard any unreasonable facts. I think people have raised some very significant questions. Uh, also, I've spoken with Charlie on many occasions. I like Charlie and his family very much. Uh, like Charlie, I've been in the town 40 years. It seems to me that we can all work together and work this out. I think we all want the same thing. I would just ask for more time to understand these plans. Charlie's lawyer talked about a lot of work that was done. Unfortunately, I've never seen that. So I would love to understand the impact to my property such that I could address the board in a more articulate manner. But again, I just want to say that I think Charlie and his family are great people and, and I'm happy to, uh, to work with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Hi. My name is Jean Yoder, and I live at 70 Churchill, and that's the house above the lot that's be, um, for the house that's being um, pr uh, pr proposed. And uh, we're not opposed to this plan, but the only um, public concern, I, uh, the only concern I wanted to register is that we're very concerned about how the ledge is removed. Um, we have a retaining wall that will be very close to the work site, and also the foundation of our house is literally built on ledge. It's literally on the ledge. So the lawyer mentioned they do primarily chip, chipping and blasting only if necessary. So I just want to express my concern that they be as cautious and careful about the removal of the ledge because it could negatively impact us. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Dr. Chris Geyer. Uh, I am neighbor to uh, Mr. Delvin and Mr. Klein. Uh, I live at 56 Churchill and I'm representing the condo association there, uh, which consists of two units. Um, I haven't had much time to look at this issue. I was informed about it on Friday. Um, I, I haven't met, uh, met Mr. Piggott. Um, I don't uh, have complete understanding of what the plans are. Um, I've reviewed some of the documents from Mr. Klein and the, the memorandum. Uh, and just you know, re reiterate concerns about potential issues with safety and, and drainage. So, thank you. Thank you. Hey, anybody else? I'm Bob Willeman. I live at 70 Churchill. I'm her husband. I just wanted to add that the with, this has no legal or engineering significance, but because Charlie is a neighbor and a resident building a house for himself, and it's going to be quite a nice house. My feeling is that I think it'll generally enhance the neighborhood, enhance the aesthetics of the area and so on. I may be the only person who feels that way, but I think he will take care to try to placate neighbors' concerns and so on. That's my feeling, so I just wanted to express that, so. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, if I could, um, Mr. Town Manager, if you want to answer again briefly, and or Mr. Rademacher, um, I do know a question has been posed about, you know, interface with the town. I know. Mr. Attorney Inessi said um, various meetings with the police department, fire department, board of health, as well as DPW, and I think I heard six to eight meetings with 
Wayne Chenard. Is there anything you want to add, or maybe Mr. Rademacher or Scott? Well, I think Scott I'd ask Pond. Mr. Rademacher to talk a little bit about what would happen should the board choose to approve the mm -hmm. amendment to the Board of Survey tonight, what process would follow in terms of approval of the layout of the private way and stormwater management mm -hmm. uh, and development of the site. And Mr. Rademacher, if anything I stated was incorrect, please correct my memory. Sure. Uh, Mike Rademacher, uh, Director of Public Works. Uh, I, I'm going to have to ask, what, what specifically you were... So I know there was a lot of questions in regards to uh, approval of stormwater management and yes. drainage. And, I, and I, I know reading through the documents that um, Wayne Schoenard uh, has told the Piggots and others and uh, an attorney in Essie that some of those approvals wouldn't happen unless the board chose to approve this uh, amendment to the Board of Survey. Well, correct. So the engineering department's purview is on the drainage uh, of the stormwater for the house lot itself. Uh, about, I guess it was maybe five years ago, the town uh, adopted a stormwater runoff bylaw that pertained to um, the lot, the development of, of property, and, but not private ways. Private ways, excuse me, uh, the paving of private ways is exempt from this stormwater bylaw. Uh, so that review is, is not necessarily for the roadway itself, but for the house lot. I think what um, Wayne uh, Chenard in the engineering department did not want to approve drainage for a house lot when there was question on the private way matter. So if he made any comment that he couldn't review that until that was approved, I would imagine it was in that regard. Uh, and because the private way, <clears throat> excuse me, is being, is, uh, is being proposed to be developed at a different grade than the original Board of Survey, uh, that's why it, be, it rose, to this, um, rose to this level. Uh, as far as the private way plans themselves, I believe the reason that it was being brought to this board rather than the, um, the newly uh, adopted uh, board of survey is because the original board of survey was approved by this body. And this is not a new private way, uh, but an amendment to an existing private way. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, there has been some comment about all the requirements of the new board of survey. Uh, curb, height, width, grade, drainage, and all that. Uh, that's all correct. Uh, that pertains to new Board of Survey plans. Uh, this is not, again, this is adoption. This is a revision of, of an already existing private way, so it was not felt that those criteria pertain to this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do my colleagues, any questions, discussion, <clears throat> motion, or whatever? Mr. Greerly? Yeah. So, you know, we, we as always want to hear and listen to all the neighbors, but we have looked into this, as has just been explained, we've gotten two different opinions, I believe, on this issue. This was done originally by a Board of Selectmen. Only a Board of Selectmen have authority to amend what was done by a Board of Selectmen, not the Redevelopment Board, so that's why it falls here, rightly so. A number of the issues brought up by the neighbors are issues that we have nothing to do with at this point in time, but will all be dealt with uh, as time goes on. Our only responsibility here is whether or not to amend that original board of survey, and I move there that we do that at this point in time, that we amend the board of survey with the drainage uh, corrections or with the design that has been made. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to answer questions that people have on the board of survey issues. Uh, we can't answer blasting issues. We can't answer all of the other uh, kind of issues. But uh, uh, withstanding the fact the Piggott's are, and all these neighbors are outstanding Arlingtonian citizens, I see no reason why we as a board should not amend that original board of survey and allow this to follow along in the process now. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Burley, <coughs> seconded by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Carroll? Thank you very much. Um, I have a lot of concerns, and I, I, I would not be able to go forward th this evening, I don't think, on this with what we have right now. Um, first of all, let me say that the, the positive thing that I'm hearing is that it sounds like there is a lot of goodwill and a lot of discussion between various neighbors and, and uh, Mr. Piggott, and I think that's the way that, that these things should ideally um, play out. What, what I'm concerned about is that well, we have a lot of material from proponents and, and uh, opponents of the proposal before us. As far as input from our own departments in front of us, we actually had, had more for an icy machine and a coffee maker at Walgreens than we do 
for, for, the, for this from, from, I'm looking at the materials we have before us and for some previous port of survey proposal, I think when, when you were the engineer, Mr. Rademacher, we actually have some memos you know, regarding width issues um, and memos uh, from, from the planning director as well uh, with, with input in, into that before the board of surveys took, took action. So I feel a little uncomfortable. I mean, there's also a memo in here from a, a, previous, um, a previous proposal from, from the fire chief himself. And, and I have no, no doubt that, that um, the proponents have consulted with, with the chief, but we don't have anything in front of us advising us from the chief as to whether or not these are issues um, with the widths as they propose, the 16-foot widths um, as, as they proposed. Um, I'd feel much more comfortable, vo comfortable voting on this with that material in front of us. And while I, I, I grant that the new Board of Survey, the, the Redevelopment Board has a new set of criteria, is there anything to prevent this Board of Survey in acting on an amendment applying the new criteria in, in our decisions? I don't know to whom. Yeah, the, the criteria. As far as things like width and, and, um, and such. The only criteria that can be used, um, uh, this is what Attorney Rice informed me of when making this opinion or prior, prior to her departure, would be the criteria that were in place when the Board of Survey was initially implemented. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Byrne? Um, I, I, I appreciate Joe's concerns, and I, I will agree with him that it's very nice to hear about the work that's going on in the, neighbor, in the neighborhood itself. Um, with regards to the you know safety issue and the width, I, I you look around Arlington and there are many roads that are you know even less wide than what is being proposed here, and I don't see how we could you know change you know or not allow this project to go forward after we have seen other roads you know move forward throughout this process with um, even less than what's being uh, proposed here. Um, so I'm I'm still more than comfortable and I'm moving forward with Kevin's motion. Mr. Carroll? Is the representation accurate, though, that we're in some of these materials that the width that's being proposed in the amendment is actually less than what was on the original Board of Survey? That the original was for 40 and, and the current width being proposed is 16. So we are actually shrinking what was approved in 1924. Right. When equipment was smaller. Mr. Right? Grayley? It's not 1924. I know. <laughs> Quite a few homes yeah. have been built since that period of time. They only have the width that they have. So, But that's exactly what we're voting on as a board of survey. Will we amend that from the 40 feet to the 60? You know, and, and bluntly, Mr. Rademacher, Mr. Chapterling speaking and saying that this has been investigated by Mr. Chenard is plenty of information for me. Yeah. I know you don't have it in writing, but I have... No question procedures have been followed here. Okay. Um, I would just state that, um, which I know Mrs. Skorpelka has already taken care of, and I, I'm not going to make any legal rulings on the legal questions posed. I'm not an attorney. I am a court reporter, so mm -hmm. I know what I should speak, what I should say, and when I should say it. I will say that um, former town council attorney Rice has been advising me and my colleagues all the way along in the process about what our role is, what our due diligence is, what the scope and parameters of what we should be considering. Um, but we like to hear some of the outside issues just because here's a forum, neighbors are here. It seems like you all are already talking anyways. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Piggott seem um, willing and able to have met with you and continue to meet with you, um, as well as the other um, residents um, I'm just remembering first names, Robert and others, 9 Windermere, 70 Churchill. Um, I know Mrs. Kropelka will make sure that the memo of opposition filed by Attorney Tumayan um, will be incorporated into our minutes. I'm going to deal with the issues that I think we, we as a board should be dealing with, as well as um, both Attorney Tumayan and um, the husband and wife. Um, were you, what, what number, church? What, what number church mill are you? No, we're 113 Irving. Uh, the we the, there. the residents of 113 Ir Irving, they wanted it, both parties wanted it noted, the, the questioning if this is the appropriate body board of selectmen to have that board of survey. Um, I feel that we are, and that can be debated a, a later day in a later forum. And as well as, um, I can't really speak to the other things, but in terms of plowing and the like, um, 
I really feel like all these neighbors know each other and um, things can get, will be resolved. And from what I've told of the Pickett family, um, they're people of their word and care very much like everybody else who lives in Windermere and Irving and Churchill uh, about their neighborhood and about their town. And um, I just, I know I can't include this in our vote, but I'm encouraged by, again, with the flooding issue, um, the discussion around the berm, as well as raising at least three inches. I would just put in a, a plug, but it's not incorporated into the vote at all. I'm a firm believe, a believer of the higher the curbs as well, in, including the engineering, um, the better it handles some of the runoff. So, on a, unless there's any further discussion by my colleagues, on a no, I just oh. want to make one further point. Mm -hmm. Even if this went to the redevelopment board, it still would have to come back yes. to us. We, yes. we are the only ones that, on this issue, can amend the board of service. So I'm sorry the question whether we have the authority here. There's no question we do. Okay. Motion by oh, Mr. Carroll. No, I, I I don't argue that, uh, Mr. Carilli. I, I'm just saying that I'd feel much more comfortable having the the um, the, the fire chief's recommendation in, in front of me on this. We ask for it for all sorts of other permits that that that, that we grant that are of much less import. I'd much and I have no doubt about the drainage. I feel like I do have sufficient. We have sufficient information on the drainage. But on the other public works issues, including the plowing, um, trash removal, if Mr. Rademacher, maybe you can address whether or not you feel that that, um, that the plan would be sufficient to, to for that. Because, well, I, I I think we all appreciate the offer of the proponent to to privately plow the road. There's no guarantee that that that, that family will be there forever, and. By approving this amendment to these, you know, in this these uh, dimensions, we're actually putting a responsibility also on the direct abutters to this as a private way. We're, we're, so we have to make sure that that. Um, All right, I'll allow some that. leniency on that. Just but stating for the record again, that's not under the purview of the board of survey. But if Mr. Rademacher has a quick answer to that, but that really is in, in consideration of our vote. Okay. Did you have any, just where Mr. Kiro has asked you to comment? Sure. On the plowing and trash, we would, um, we would work with the proponent um, to write an agreement about the plowing. You know, it could be something that goes in the deed of the property or whatnot, okay. that it, it goes for, for the life of the property. And, and, the, and the trash pickup, the same, will, may have to come out to the intersecting street, so we wouldn't have to back trash trucks up the road as well. You have precedent for that? Yes, we do. I believe I believe we've made those requests of other in the past. And I'm sorry, does town manager, do you have a sense from the, uh, the the fire chief that that this is workable? That these. Uh... Uh, I, I, I can't say that I, I do. I mean, I, I've read the documents provided by Attorney Anessi, which states that he's spoken with the fire department, but I've not seen a document or had a conversation with Chief Jefferson myself. Okay. Um, any further discussion? And a motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. 3 1. Thank you. Next, we, and thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you. Next, agenda item seven. We have the Betterment Order, Madison Ave. We had a hearing on this two meetings ago. Actually, I'll let everyone. Get ready to go out so I'm not screaming. <laughs> okay, we had a hearing, the public hearing on this two meetings ago. Uh, the neighbors on Madison Ave, a private way, put forth a proposal um, under our betterment relief um, to pave, repave again talking about curbing and berms. Um, we now have before us the actual document um, that needs to be signed and everything else I understand from Mrs. Kropelka is all set with Madison and we just need to take a formal vote. Vote. Ms. 
Sorry, Mr. Chapterline. I'm just going to add, so the document before the board tonight is the formal legal instrument which will allow the town to collect payment on the taxes for the repaving of this road, on, on the, the abutters tax bills uh, over the course of the next five years if they choose not to pay in advance. And can I ask, is the maximum amount still, I'm doing it from memory, $66,164, no higher than that? $66,000. 441 and 30 cents. Okay, so that's the yeah. thing. That has not changed from when we got it the first time. That was the only concern that the neighbors had as they worked through the plans. And they're aware, Diane, if there's any additional charge, they have to come They bear the costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just where we're putting liens on people who yeah. don't pay the amount in full, which it sounds like some people will be doing that by January 1st on or about 2013. Okay. Sir, I'm... Move approval. Second. Second. Um, any further discussion, questions from my colleagues? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Town Manager, Mr. Chapterling? Yeah, two quick pieces of new business. Um, as the board knows, I uh, last week uh, spoke about hopefully this week having an update on our search for a new town council. And we, uh, we do have uh, an announcement that a new town council uh, has been extended an offer on employment and has accepted. His name is Douglas Heim or Doug Heim. Uh, he right now is working for the Boston Public Schools in their legal office uh, and prior to that has experience working in the New York City Office of Corporation Counsel uh, with a great deal of experience in that particular job working with the New York City Police Department. Uh, so he has extensive uh, municipal experience, uh, although different types of municipalities than, than Arlington is. Um, but uh, through the interview process, through the assessment process, through meeting with me, uh, everybody in, who encountered him was very impressed with him. Uh, I look forward to bringing him uh, to meet the board at a future meeting. Uh, we anticipate his start date will be sometime in mid-December. He has a commitment uh, with his current employer, a case that he wants to see through to the end. Uh, so we're still working on that start date. Uh, but we, are, uh, we feel very good about this hire. And again, I look forward to introducing him to the board in the very near future. Uh, the other quick piece of new business, Wednesday evening, uh, we have a public meeting in regards to the Arlington Center Safe Travel uh, project. I know the board has heard presentations on this from Mr. Rademacher and others in the past. Uh, there's a, two discussions happening in this meeting. One are the updates to the plan which talk about the removal of the seven, or seven parking spots or six parking spots and one taxi stand on Mass Ave in front of Cambridge Savings Bank and the Jam and Java are soon to be kickstand cafe parking lot uh, and what that means for the, the total project. The second part of the meeting will be for members of the public to give the town input on potential alternatives for replacing those parking spots. I know I told the board about uh, a plan that uh, the town had put together uh, in regards to using some space on the Jam and Java parking lot to replicate those spots. Uh, there's been a lot of concerns raised about that, uh, but that's in one alternative that's out there. Mr. Rademacher has done uh, really yeoman's effort to try to uh, identify other parking spots that could be created in Arlington Center, some on the roadway, uh, some through some other creative means. So on Wednesday night, we're going to have sort of a public dialogue about some of those alternatives and what uh, concerns residents might have uh, and other users of Arlington Center parking. Uh, so that should, that should be a good uh, public dialogue as well. That's all I have for new business. Mr. Greeley? No new business. Mr. Kiro? Um, I just say that if uh, you haven't gotten your fill at the Senior Center on Wednesday, on Thursday there's going to be a master planning yes. public forum uh, where the, the vision statement and the initial set of goals as well as a really impressive uh, draft set of existing conditions uh, will be um, uh, presented. It distills uh, the input of you know, hundreds of the residents of the town, a lot of us, I know all um, were interviewed and it distills a lot of that and uh, it should be a very interesting session. I, and I think that's at 7. Sounds right. At the yep. Senior Center on uh, Thursday. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. No new business. Um, how do you say the new attorney's last name? Heim. Heim, okay. H-E-I-M. All right. Um, just uh, to that venue, and I'm going to leave it to the chairman, Mr. Dunn, to work with the town manager on that. Um, I have total respect for somebody that has a commitment to their job, and I really do admire mm. that he's, you know, finishing something um, for the city of Boston um, that shows great character and is a good testament to the town council we're about to get. 
here's my concern, and um, it maybe can be addressed in, with Mrs. Kropelk also in a myriad of ways, where we have to, it was anticipated by, by September there'd be some draft language on the Hackney rules and orders. That's really come to a standstill, and we have to do that in December, as well as there was discussion that by October we would have some draft language on our alcohol policy. Um, Mary, Mrs. Sullivan has seven or eight suggestions from the board. That does not mean they're incorporated, but suggestions, possible suggestions to be put forth before the board, one of them being the night of the offense occurs is the night that the um, penalty uh, commences. I'm going to say the wording wrong, just as a proposal for this full board, board to discuss. Um, I really think both those things have been sort of stalled um, just because there is need for a town council. So um, I know there's been an offer um, by a former town council as well as we really need to get that going. You know, on the Hackney with Joe Carabello, Mr. Mr. Chapter Lane, we need an attorney as well as with the language on the proposed um, amendments, additions, revisions to our alcohol policy. So I'm just concerned that um, we need to address that in the short term. So if we could leave that to Mrs. Kropelka and the town manager as well as the chairman. Mr. Greeley? Well, I mean, I think tonight was an example also where I would have felt better with Man. the town council yes. here. Yeah. I mean, I total respect for right. Juliana's opinion, and I know we sought the opinion of uh, Mr. Marlin. Yeah, correct. Can yeah. I say that now that I've said it? Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. I prefer know, in the future if we can, even if it's Mr. Attorney You know, Martin. we, I, and I'm with you, I, Mr. Heim, I, I appreciate that kind of dedication and I expect that's what he's going to bring to us. Mm -hmm. and, but I wonder whether we want to look like for a one month. I'm, that would be my solution, proposed mm -hmm. solution, um, but yeah. let's get some ideas and have the full board. Um, well, so I, for, for, for what it's worth, uh, uh, with all due respect, uh, I had been taking and working, taking direction really working with a, the chairman Dunn in regards to not bringing Mr. Marlenga here uh, if we didn't deem it necessary. So I apologize that he wasn't here tonight, but uh, you know, we, I wasn't really acting in any uh, ignorance of the fact that it's obviously preferable to have an attorney. Uh, I'm just saying now that we're, get, we're getting into the starting to kick up with financial and budget and revenue task force and things like that, I'd really like to see something just as well as to get moving on these two projects and then just the other two. And I want to thank the town manager and the members of the committee, um, town officials, Mrs. Grapelka, um, for doing yeoman's work on the, on the uh, town council search. Um, you, you didn't leave any stone unturned. <laughs> um, and I really do appreciate all the time because I know I've been... As with my colleagues waiting. Um, had a conversation with the town manager um, who sent the letter, actually the chairman did, to DCR. Had a conversation, I mean, had a phone call that I played for the manager from Dan Hunt from DCR, um, along with dealing with the lesser intense, work intensive of the signs up, down, wherever. Um, Dan Hunt of DCR has put forth a draft statement that he will be presenting to the town the board of town manager, board of selectmen and residents. Um, he's put it before his deputy commissioner, I think he said, for approval where I've asked them that if we can get back on the road and get, the, back, on, get back on the promises that Mr. Grayley and I lost July 2012 in terms of the maintenance and other issues on Sunnyside. Um, and that's sort of the last piece of the pie um, that, that needs to be cut and served. Um, so hopefully that'll be done. And lastly, Arlington hosted and won't be doing it for another 11 years because there's 12 cities and towns in the Middlesex League competition. Hosted it Wednesday night. Um, it was very successful. I have to say all coaches being very competitive. Uh, it was commented by the coaches and all of the ADs were there except for one. It was the night that the Red Sox won the World Series, so you know what that means. Um, that they said, you know, it was a very well-run. Um, Rick Ionelli from the school department, Mark Miano, and his custodians, uh, Jeremy Rodrigo and Frank, as well as all my, pop, uh, all my high school parents, husband and wives, um, and getting those, well, actually, it wasn't too hard getting the dads out. Um, really, they ran that event, and I heard over and over again, Arlington has run the best cheerleading comp league competition, which it really is a big undertaking. You have about 800-plus people in the red gym. You have about two, 300 cheerleaders in the uh, cafeteria, and then you have people cycling 
through the blue gym. So it really, I think I walked eight miles that day, that night. Um, and we are, the Arlington High varsity cheerleaders leaders are moving on to re regionals November 17th. So uh, hopefully we're successful from there and we go to states. If there is no further business. I'm you mean to national? We go to states, then to national. That, that, you're thinking Pop Warner. Good, I'm glad you're paying attention. So they do it back. I shouldn't say backwards. They do it differently for high school. Um, with that, move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thanks.